Awesome. Oh, beautiful. Mm. Thank you all. That was such an appropriate opening song. You asked for it, you got Loves it. Loves indeed. Good morning again, Unity Renaissance, and to all of our family at home watching. And of course, we're sending lots of light and love to our beloved Reverend Paula, who is on a much needed sabbatical. Many of you have probably heard, or at least us old schoolers, have heard of a singer called Tina Turner. And she wrote a song called What's Love Got to Do With It? And I remember back in the day we'd all be singing, you know, what's love? It's just a secondhand emotion and who needs a heart? All this tear-jerking music. And while I love Tina as an artist, I have to respectfully disagree that love is a secondhand emotion. Love is one of the most important gifts that we have and can give in the world. And when I was back in religion and I was studying, learning the Bible inside out, even as a young person, one scripture that always spoke to my spirit was 1 Corinthians. And if you'll bear with me for a moment, I'm going to share with you from the English Standard Version. And it reads, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver my body up to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love's, love does not boast or is envious. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And verse 8 says, love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. And as for tongues, they will cease. And as for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, that which is partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But now that I am an adult, I have put these childish ways behind me. For now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face. We shall know fully, even as we are fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, but the greatest of these is love. What if we could really live by this quote, these scriptures? How different would the world look? Love is so important. In the New International Version, it is repeated over 550 times. So that just gives you a clue that love is so very key to our spiritual growth, happiness, and prosperity. Now, there are several types of love, but I'm only going to address the couple of them this morning. The first one is agape. This is what some people call spiritual love. It's an unconditional love. It's a love that's bigger than ourselves. It's boundless compassion and infinite empathy. It's what some people call the divine love, the love that God has for us, the love that we have for God, the divine spirit, by whatever name you choose to call that source. 
The second one I'd like to discuss is Eros. Most of us are familiar with that because it's the sensual and passionate type of love. The romantic, often identified with Cupid. It's the love that exists between couples that usually include intimacy. However, it's good to remember that sex and love are different. People have sex for many different reasons and it doesn't always include love. So that is a really key message that we want to get across to our young people, especially a lot of our young girls who are having children and they're just children, looking for love in all the wrong places and mistaking having sex or being intimate for love. So we definitely want to get that message out today. The last one I want to touch on is Philia. This is love without romantic attraction. It's like what exists in families and oftentimes with friends and even in a congregation with your religious or spiritual family. It's when people share the same values and have respect for one another. Sometimes it's even called brotherly love. How does this show up? It shows up as being supportive, yet setting boundaries. It is being loving, but not controlling or demanding. It means thriving to always keep your heart open, to hear the other person's point of view without trying to make your point so that you can be right. When we reach a certain stage in life, we realize that having peace is far better than being right. So I want to go back a minute to this agape love, this spiritual love, because under that umbrella comes self-love. This is huge for so many of us are just beginning to learn how to love ourselves and to understand why this self-love is so important. Some of us have been taught that it's vain or prideful to speak highly of yourself. It's rare that you will hear somebody say, oh, I'm really good at that. Oh, I master that. Oh, I'm a genius in that area. We rarely acknowledge our gifts. We rarely even acknowledge that spark of the divine that lives in and breathes and has its being in us. So what are some of the signs that we may not love ourselves enough? or that there's some areas that we need to work on. One of them is we have feelings of inadequacy too often. We compare ourselves with others, how much they have, what kind of house they have, how much money they have, how their family is doing. We're always placing someone above ourselves. Another is, and this is huge, I see it all the time. And I'm sure you do too. People have difficulty accepting compliments and gifts. How often have you given someone something and they say, oh, you didn't have to do this? Or why did you do this? Or if you pay them a compliment, that's a beautiful shirt you have on. I love that color with your complexion. And you reply, oh, this old thing. <laughs> or women, we're sometimes good for it. Oh, that's a beautiful top. Girl, I got this from the Goodwill. It wasn't but $3. <laughs> We're trying to understand when someone is giving you a gift or paying you a compliment, the gift comes through the person, but it comes from the divine. Their heart, your heart is moved to give because of that spark that says, give to take Peggy. So just understand that when you receive, and if you feel uncomfortable, and there was a time that I did, I've had years to work on and practice learning how to receive. If you feel uncomfortable, there's two words you can just say and move on. Thank you. Just say thank you and just feel that and keep it moving. No need to elaborate on how much it costs or where you got it from. Just say thank you. Another, 
sign is we blame others for our mistakes. Whenever something comes up, we say, well, Peggy did it, Ardell did it, someone else did it, John did it. We always look at everything outside of ourselves. But change involves, it's an inside job. And whenever you're finding fault with everybody else or placing the blame, we have to stop and take a look at what's the one common denominator in there? It's you. So that may be an area you need to work on. So many of us have gotten confused or gotten it twisted because of what we saw in our households growing up. What did love look like in your household? Did your parents show affection or openly express their love for one another? So where did we learn what love was supposed to look like or feel like? Many of us got our impressions of love from movies, from the television, from love songs. Speaking of love songs, I just want to share this. No matter how long you've been working on yourselves, it's amazing what's stored in your subconscious. I like this card game called Canasta. So once a week, some friends and I get together and we play Canasta. And because I'm old school, I play old music. So I had some old Motown music playing and an old Letter James song came on. And we're just singing and playing, and the words to the song that I caught myself singing was, I would rather go blind than see you with someone else. <laughs> I'm like, holy time up. I said, did I just say that? I don't think so. Let me cancel and clear this right away. And I'm thinking of, just think about the, oh, the words to the songs we used to sing. I, I love this group called The Temptations. And they used to have this song, Ain't Too Proud to Beg. Well, if it's real love, why well, I got to beg for anything? I'm just saying. So we just really want to be careful about how we identify love. Okay. What about when you make a mistake? Do you beat yourself up? And do you feel guilt and shame for years? Do you carry that baggage around, refusing to unload it and put it down? Or is it easy for you to forgive yourself and realize that when you know better, not when you hear, not when you read, but when you know better, you do better? Can you extend the same empathy and love to yourself that you would to a friend who was hurting or who had made a mistake? How often do you praise yourself for your strengths, for the good that lies within you? And I want to go back just another minute to this agape love, this unconditional love. How does it show up in a spiritual or a religious organization? One of the ways it can show up is of you giving of yourself to the best of your abilities to help transform lives that transform the world, which is what we do here at Unity Renaissance. It means giving of your time and your money and your support for our mission. 10% is always good, but we know there are many who give to capacity. They give far more than 10% because they want to support our cause, our mission, and our vision. It also means accepting and loving our congregants regardless of their sex, their gender, their race, or their political party. Reverend Paula had a message a couple weeks ago, and it was called Live and Let Live. That was a powerful message, and I've listened to it a couple of times. And in that message, she reminds us about not judging people. You know, it's so easy to do if we're not careful, but let's not do that. And we want to be reminded that we're all brothers and sisters. 
There's a quote that says, everyone you meet is going through some type of challenge that you may not know anything about. So of all the things that you can be, be kind, be compassionate, be understanding. Help them to feel your love and compassion. And everyone that crosses the door seals here at Unity Renaissance, again, extend a warm welcome. Let them know that Unity Renaissance is a place of spiritual growth, of love, of healing, and of acceptance. And if you will, we will do a short meditation. So if I could ask you to please close your eyes if you feel comfortable. And if you feel comfortable, take your hand and put it over your sweet heart, over that beautiful sweet heart of yours. And just take a deep breath in and release. Take another deep breath in and release. And feel forgiveness pouring all over you. And realize that you always did the best you could under the given circumstances and with the resources you had available to you in every moment. Now breathe in deeply, release, and say to your beautiful soul, I forgive you, I love you. Forgive yourself for all the times you judged your physical appearance and that you told yourself that you were anything less than beautiful. Now take a deep breath in and release and speak to that open heart saying, I forgive you, I love you. For all the times that you did not honor yourself, that you gave away your power, your time, your money, and your energy in relationships that did not nourish you. Let's take a deep breath in and release and speak to that beautiful heart of yours saying, I forgive you. I love you. And know that you're leaving here today knowing that you are beautiful, you are strong, you are intelligent, you are powerful, and worthy of unconditional love. And that you are committed to loving yourself more from this day forward. And take a deep breath in and release it. Thank you. Spirit flow through me as I open up to be an expression of your unfolding peace. Show, Spirit, show through me as I open up to be an expression of your 